Hello everyone! If you're a denizen of Geek for Fun, you're like, wait, this isn't a screen with JPEGs and renders on it. This is a video <laughs> game. <laughs> oh my. Yes, yes, we are we're doing some some let's playing, but uh, with a with a particularly nerdy twist on it. Indeed. We have a goal, a purpose this time. A geek for fun myself and my very good friend and person I wouldn't ever think of doing a Sonic game without, Sid Part 2. You better not do a Sonic game without me. That's, That's like, just so rude. It's like not inviting your best friend to a threesome. Like, come on. There you go. We're demonetized immediately. <laughs> With our idea for this, as you know, we are a primarily story-based channel. We do what ifs. We're going to be going through this game in preparation of doing a what if rewrote Sonic Adventure. Now, this game's story isn't something I actually dislike, but there are definitely some things in the Sonic's canon and overall ideas where we could tighten up a little bit, especially with the modern franchise. So that's gonna be where we're approaching this with. Um, I am using the PC version for this, so you will see some mods. And the first of those mods Select your character. is the Dreamcast models, because we're trying to get the idea that, okay, Sonic is gonna age from his classic design slowly, rather than just skipping to now he's lanky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know, like, you're, you and I are interesting when it comes to Sonic things, because I like the classic design a lot, but I really like modern Sonic's design too. I'm, like, so torn between them, but I think you are... You're pretty much, like, dead set on classic. Classic or die, aren't you? Not classic or die, because I do think modern Sonic's design is really good. Especially the, like, this period of modern Sonic, where it's, like, the adventure artwork, and it's got, like... You know, I think you know what I mean? Like, we don't really get the artwork or Sonic style. Like, Sonic X had the same style in, like, how mm -hmm. the shading was done, compared to how the modern Sonic is now. That, I think, is a really, like, almost on par with classic. My big argument is... I feel like it needlessly spit, uh, split the player base in a way that it mm. didn't need to happen. And it's something that Mario, when it went to 3D, never did, and Zelda, when it went to 3D, never did. Sonic making such a drastic design change, I think, caused more problems down the line than it needed to. Um, okay. So I think just introducing our solution being a gradual change. So Sonic Adventure 1 is still got his classic proportions, he just got green eyes now. Nice, nice. All right, let's start the game, man. Well, okay then. <laughs> let's let's start playing this game on this let's play. Gosh. Gosh. <laughs> so how did you feel about Sonic moving to more like realistic settings? It's always one of those things that I always felt was like really weird that he just ends up in a city, uh, a city and stuff all of a sudden. And it's like, oh god, um, it's it's just one of those things I never quite um, understood the the choice for. But at the same time, it does look really cool. I don't know. I just it always seemed like you had such a rich and vibrant world with with Mobius. Uh, I don't know if that was even the game. Um, name for the planet they were okay, on. I, I, like a manual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you had such, like, rich, like, kind of, you know, weird, fun environments. It always felt, like, a little limiting to to go to just Earth cities. I thought you could have just done, you know, imagined cool cities or something. And I, I guess I was just disappointed they never went with that. Because you could still have, like, inspired by San Francisco in my head. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of where they went in Generations, right? They tried to fuse... The two design philosophies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I totally agree with that. Oh my god. <laughs> One thing though, I do want to mention while he's here. Uh, Hundred percent keeping Chaos as the villain. That's a Chaos is such a cool villain idea. Oh yeah. I mean, it's it's like this weird thing that you can't exactly fight as Sonic. Because I, I mean, like this is this boss fight's a really good example where it's just. It's this weird water-based enemy, and so yeah, you can be spiky and and break robots, but what do you do when you've got, like, you know, this amorphous blob kind of enemy to deal with? Mm -hmm. You just hit it in the head three times. There you go. Yeah, I that, just told that's... You how you solve that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good job. <laughs> uh, but it's one of those things where I do... I think it's interesting that this is the game about Sonic dealing with a natural enemy, 
where every other previous enemy has been entirely robotic. Like, Knuckles wasn't even really an enemy, he was just like a, a rival figure. Chaos is like the final boss of this game, spoilers! <laughs> and he's the major threat that Eggman's using throughout. God of destruction. Hakai oh shit, kill. someone get Beerus! Um, Hakai! Um, Literally! Dragon Ball copying Sonic? <laughs> the, the day has come when the roles have been reversed. <laughs> Truly the tables have turned. Oh. oh no! Not Tails! Why does Tails fly a plane? I've never been able to wrap my head around that one. Uh, why does one fly? Norman fly a plane? Because it's cold. Yeah. There you and go. She's There's wearing like a bikini half the time. Tails That's is naked, why. man. <laughs> but he's got fur. He's got shoes. Uh. <laughs> and gloves. He's wearing yeah. less. <laughs> so, you know what? There, There's the reason why Tails is keeping a, a, a plane in there this. There you go. Unless you want to... That's your stamp on this story. Tails no plane. <laughs> yeah, Tails no plane. He, he just flies everywhere. Nah, I don't know. I don't know. Man, this this part of the game is super nostalgic for me because I'm I'm a bad Sonic fan. I never actually owned Sonic Adventure. Um, I ended up getting a Sega Saturn instead of a Sega Genesis or uh, Sega Dreamcast. But I always remember playing the demo for Sonic Adventure um, in my local game store. I like walk in there and be like, "Can I can I play that Sonic game?" <laughs> and so just this part right here with this freaking whale. Um, was like burned into my memory and like this is the level that like you know where it was all at this is the coolest thing ever where you're running right at the camera ah right? yeah this is i think this that sequence defined modern sonic is like yep. moving away from um like compared to how um green hill was right that's the modern equivalent of like going through that loop the looping green hill and then coming out and soaring through the air right it's like that's yeah. the moment where the controls taking away from you but it's not a bad thing because it looks cool as fuck um mm -hmm. that's kind of where sonic thrives to me like it's not i don't think that's a bad thing occasionally taking control from the player because sometimes yes you go through the same thing over and over again does you kind of you lose that kind of like whoa impact but that first time is special and then mm -hmm. even on repeat playthroughs, when you are trying to like speed run something, um, it's a nice breather of like, okay, I'm. What's the next thing I need to do, right? So yeah, exactly. And think... like that's the thing about modern Sonic gameplay that I it took them forever to figure it out, which is you just make the the scripted stuff, the the stuff where you're not playing the game well, where you're just letting the game play itself. You make that the slowest path. Um, I, I think that was one of the brilliant things about Generations is, yeah, you could, like, that game gets criticized as being, oh, just boost to win. I mean, if all you do when you play Generations is just hold down the boost button, you will automatically go to the slowest possible way to get through that level. Mm -hmm. It requires really precise control and timing of things to get on the fastest paths. Um, so I always thought that was one of the, the more brilliant things about how they adapted his gameplay design to be able to complement this um, this kind of like cinematic uh, pieces, you know? You could just leave Tails right now. He's like, all right, bye. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I first rewrite. Tails does die. <laughs> Tails dies on a beach. Sonic left him to die. Tails was like, found yeah, dead in my I need chili dogs. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, hundred percent. Um, I think Generations is nice if you're gonna if you're not gonna do this because I adore this gameplay style, especially here. I think this is 2D Sonic brought to life in terms of like momentum and different paths. Um, but I do feel like the boost gameplay is also a good in idea of that multiple path logic. Mm -hmm. One thing I do want to point out here is I find it interesting that. This is where we first get to see, obviously this was the first game with voice acting, this is the first time we get to see Tails using Chaos Emeralds for his tech. Oh, really? I didn't know that, that's cool. So he's like, he's powered his plane with it, but then it crashed because of course it did, you crazy suicidal fox. Yeah, it is, it is kind of like powering a blender with a gas engine when you think about it. Um, do you, do you really need a plane that's that's got an, a, a fuel source of 
this unlimited power when you've already got you know regular engines and shit. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a, I think it's an interesting direction to maybe if we are gonna do because tales does have everyone does have their own story in this game, and I do want to mm -hmm. keep that aspect because I think maybe maybe remove one person's story, <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I feel like giving those characters individual stories is like the classic games as well. You did a tales playthrough, did a Sonic playthrough, did a Knuckles playthrough. Like I think that's a funny thing of Sonic that makes me sad they've gotten rid of now because they're so afraid of like the 06 damage of like okay we can't risk having any other characters but Sonic um, and it, I think mm -hmm. this was one of those games where it really championed like no 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 his cast of characters are just as cool as him in different ways so making Tails the tech guy and maybe seeding that because he's so used to Sonic being around to handle the Chaos Emeralds things he kind of doesn't realize how dangerous they really are um, mm. That could be something cool to explore. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see that. Um, it's one of the things that like I always found interesting about the Sonic games is how you can um, the the level of threat can be either very comical or like very serious. It's it's got this great spectrum to a thing. Mm -hmm. Like Mario is always like very like comical and kind of you know goofy. There's I don't think there's many like emotionally invested Mario games uh, to to a certain extent. Not to not to start a war in the comments or anything, but um, Too late. Sonic, yeah, right. But Sonic, you can do like the kind of goofy, just oh, the this character is in trouble kind of premise, or you can do the the world is going to end, or you can do both. Yeah, and I think that's a good. I think that's an important tone thing to keep because although I think that's relevant, especially on this channel, but. No secret that Sonic likes to take some liberties from Dragon Ball. Let's mm -hmm. <laughs> not start that a war in the comments. I think it's cool because I'm a fan of both. I think most Sonic fans are fans of Dragon Ball. The most Dragon Ball fans are fans of Sonic. It's just similar concepts. Um, but that's a very Dragon Ball thing, right? Is you can have a gag in the middle of the most... Like, Beerus is entirely a gag character as well as a viable threat. It's like that, that mm -hmm. line. And I think Eggman over here, or I like this scene. We kind of went over it very fast, but... That scene where he's like, Sonic calls him Eggman as a nickname, but his real name is Dr. Robotnik. I think we're both in agreement that we should keep that. <laughs> no, like, that's actually my favorite thing, is is I think you could have made it all work from this scene, and, and like, you could have had a running gag that would have been perfect, which is that everyone just keeps calling him Eggman until he accidentally does it to himself. <laughs> and then he just, like, plays it off and keeps it. Uh, he's like, no, 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 I, 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 I call myself Eggman. Yes, that's my villain name. <laughs> he's my superhero name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, like, I, I think that, you know, just everyone, like, even his lackeys are calling him Eggman, and he's he's getting, like, really annoyed by it until you get to a certain point, and then he's like, oh, no, 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 my name... My, you get to a certain point, and he does it to himself, and then he just tries to, tries to play it cool. I think that could totally work for... Uh, for a running gag for Robotnik. Mm -hmm. While still keeping him have that ability to be called Robotnik, just to give him that, again, it's that idea of both silly and frightening. Yeah, because, like, I I enjoy Sonic Sat AM. It's okay, but it does, I think, go a little, at times at least, a little too far to that, like, the edginess, the darkness and stuff. And Robotnik's one of those things, like, I like Robotnik that can be both a little silly, a little goofy, and legitimately threatening at times. I like him to be able to have that turn, you know? Mm -hmm. um, those those things are cool. And it, it also helps explain why he's always, you know, partnering up with forces way beyond his control and completely overestimating his abilities, because he's, he's a genius, but he's kind of a doof. <laughs> and this is the start of that. Chaos is the first time. I mean, you can get the Chaos Emeralds themselves, you could probably say. But even in, in, the, in the original games, the Chaos Emeralds never bite him in the ass. They're always mm -hmm. a boon. Uh, here, though, Chaos does eventually bite him in the ass. But right now, um, this is the trend of... And honestly, I kind of want to keep this more individual as the one like I, I i think at the end of this i'd rather eggman learn his lesson a little bit better from chaos then because mm -hmm. i think we're retreading a lot of the same ground later on because this one was such a good execution of that concept that they kind of got comfortable with it mm -hmm. um so i do think the idea of oh, i need to get the key um i think the idea of eggman 
learning, okay, you know what, that was a bad time. I might still use powerful forces, but I might want to restrict to the thing I know best and just refine my tech. Might be a cool thing to, like, subvert um, future games and when we get to them. But on this game specifically, I don't know if you noticed that, but it's actually one of my favorite uh, Eggman moments, is he tells his plan to uh, Tails and Sonic here, right? Mm -hmm. He's never done that before, and he specifically does it because he wants them to get the emeralds to, like, hold him from him. But then he steals them from right underneath them. Like, that's some... I really love that subversion of, like, classic games. They're always chasing Eggman and they eventually go to the, the end game. Here they're trying, oh, right, you know what? He's just given us his plan. Let's beat him to it. But really, mm -hmm. you just collected them for him. Yeah, I think that's a, a good move. Um, something that could also work for Eggman, depending on like how competent we want him to to be, um, is if he's like, you know, like I knew this force would betray me, and that's why I have this contingency or, or something kind of built in there. That that like Batman Lex Luthor level of of anticipation of plans and stuff mm -hmm. that could arguably work I, I don't know how far we'd want to go with it for future installments and stuff but it could be a neat idea to play with yeah i do think one thing i do want to make sure stays relevant is keeping eggman a comical character but never making him a non-issue like he mm -hmm. should always be a frat yeah, he's always an entity, because, I mean, he is, like, still the last boss or the second-to-last boss in so many of the games, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he's he's definitely got that planning ability. Like, for all its faults, Unleashed has that just killer opening. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, like, that's what I wanted the Sonic movie to be. Just all of that. No, you, you shut your mouth. That is going to be a literal gold mine. And Jim Carrey is carrying that movie <laughs> on his back. <laughs> very true, very true. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful cinematic masterpiece. I'm going to nominate it for each Oscar. <laughs> each one of them. I'm going to nominate it for every Teen Choice Award. I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> Oscar's small potatoes. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie. I'm really... It, it, not to be too off topic or anything, but I'm like so excited to see what the merch for that movie looks like because, oh, hi, Tails ass. Yeah, um, I was just about to say, it was like, whoa, <laughs> Tails got a little crazy. Yeah, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm really excited for the merch for that movie because I actually really like the redesign. Yeah, the redesign, that, that's Tyson Hess. That's uh -huh. Tyson Hesse, Tyson Hess. I don't know how you pronounce that beautiful, beautiful savior's name. Not only is he the best Sonic artist working today by leaps and bounds, probably one of the best of all time, if not the best, they brought him on, wisely so, to redesign Sonic, and he made this beautiful little blue boy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm still like, I, I still really wish that they'd released the first trailer that everyone hated, like, way too late to do anything about it. <laughs> Just so we could keep it. Yeah, I... I... As much as I do like the new design and stuff, and I'm glad that, you know, they actually got some damn sense in them and, and stuff. Man, oh, that first nightmare design, that would have been such a good, just, like, epitome of Sonic's, like, checkered past. Uh -huh. his, his inability to maintain a consistent level of quality. That's that's my thing. Is you always had the, the old Sega marketing of... Uh, Sega does what Nintendo don't, except, you know, maintain a certain level of quality with the beloved brand. Um, that they, they don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we're out of there. At least here, though, this... I'm, a, I'm very glad we're covering this because this is almost such a very fitting time. Because this was another period of uncertainty in Sonic. But mm -hmm. when Adventure first came out, it was like... It propelled Sonic, and then when you got to Adventure 2, and especially when the GameCube port, that brought a whole new generation into Sonic. Um, that really made him as big as he's ever been compared to the 90s. So mm -hmm. looking at this, to looking at where he is now, it it makes me sad. It also makes me intrigued, and it is really what made me want to do this series, to kind of not say how could we avoid that, but... Yeah, how could we how could you that? embrace that? <laughs> Not embrace it because I do as much as I do love Sonic Boom. I will forever say Sonic has been 
uh, it's been a very bad shame that he's been mishandled the way he has, and we've oh, missed yeah. out on a lot of great games as a result. The humor is like I can't even get the stairs right now because I'm so flustered because of this. Is how passionate I am. Um, a lot of the actually, you know what? Let me. Where do I have to go? <laughs> <laughs> to Carl. This was also a really good feature. Who I want to talk about more. I'll get to that to my train of thought. Thank you, to Carl. Um, but Navi over here, <laughs> not Navi, <laughs> to Carl. I 100% think we need to make her character bigger because making her the help system was a really strong idea, but she's also kind of the emotional heart of the story, but we barely get to see her. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Um, I don't know. Like, the adventure games are, are interesting as that transition period because I think they're very important for the time, and one of the things that I've, I know I've heard a lot of Sonic fans talk about is... It's it's like a very nostalgic era of the character, but unfortunately a lot of the gameplay was so experimental that it's... Like, I think you're doing really well because you played these games like crazy as a kid, but I've seen a lot of other people struggle with the, um, the, the way in which they are kind of dated to that early 3D platforming kind of thing, you yeah, know? I 100% disagree. Like, maybe it is just because I'm hot shit. And now I've got the light speed shoes, which I you might have already noticed I had before because mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure this is a story focused thing. So if I miss any upgrades, I don't want it to halt progress because um, I don't want to spend ages on just like again more some more story focused. Let's say we're trying to do something good, unique, different with the former. Um, mm -hmm. But I a hundred percent think this has the best control of any 3D Sonic by leaps and bounds, and I will. 100% die on this fact that Mario 64 plays like garbage compared to this. <laughs> I mean, I've heard the same criticisms about Mario 64. That, like, it's a very important game, but, like, if you weren't... If you didn't grow up with it, you probably can't play that game very well See, now. It is interesting, because, again, I don't... I can't ever know that position, because I did grow up with this. Mm -hmm. Um... There's something about the way when Sonic turns. All right, this is a good example. I'm gonna do here. I know we're saying we're gonna do a gameplay, but I think this is a good observation because there are a lot of people who play this game that don't really seem to get it. So with Mario 64, when he turns, he goes in like a like he like he, he tilts right, mm -hmm. which direction he's going. And Legend of Zelda and a lot of early 3D platforms, they've got that like tilt, so it's kind of delayed. And when they jump in the air, it's like you jump straight like that, right? Sonic mm -hmm. Adventure, and I think we should get a lot of praise for this, is the first game where you turn on a dime. Mm -hmm. Because of the speed necessity, and you see like, when I did it really fast, like Sonic had that unique animation there, right? And you get like the power break sound and stuff. Uh -huh. As well, you can go anywhere when you jump, and the amount of hang time if you hold the thing is ridiculously helpful with platforming. Oh, definitely. Like, there's, 100%, there's... this game's control is great in that in like respect. I think it should get more more little bit of praise for it. Okay, and now I'm going to rewind the gameplay when you're having trouble going up the stairs. No, I mean... I... <laughs> <laughs> I will 100% also say, to my point earlier, it's hard to talk and play video games, so no one should be judged. Uh, like, I, I, as many people who play this game was like, oh, they're really bad at it. Uh, it's also like when you do a let's play, it's a lot different when playing a game at home. So even mm. I'm already, I've played this game 100% hours, I'm already taking way longer than I would normally. No, that's totally understandable. Um, no, I mean, it's, it's definitely interesting the way that uh, the gameplay evolves for 3D here. Um, I do think it's, it's, um, I think it's a really important move, and like for all the people that, that still say, oh no, Sonic should have stayed 2D, I'm like, no, that just... That's very unfeasible, and I don't think it would have worked. And I think this this game, being as big a success as it was at the time, like, let's be honest, Sega stopped making consoles after the Dreamcast, not because they didn't make great games on the Dreamcast, even for the time. It's because they released the Dreamcast at, like, three... It was the third system released within two years or something ridiculous like that. It was all just the, the business side of things as to why Sega consoles failed. Oh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is actually one of the rare things where I'm actually... I, this is the worst part of that game for me because I'm really bad at pinball. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the moment where you're actually going to show up and be good. That's funny. This is um, where I'm just going to be like, oh my god, this is the rest of the Let's Play now. This whole hour video is going to be <laughs> doing the pinball section. I just can't. I just can't. Um... 
But yeah, and this is also a little bit of trivia. So you notice how all the characters on here are the classic designs. Mm -hmm. I always thought, oh, that's a cool throwback. No! Up to this stage of development, they use the classic designs for the character models. <laughs> 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 this is Sega being lazy. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. <laughs> that's just a hundred percent. Like it makes me so happy. Ow. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't guess know Knuckles doesn't do shit. <laughs> Thanks, Knuckles. <laughs> oh. oh. But yeah, I guess. There's something about Sonic and Pinball that's always really cool. Yeah, right. He's like the. Only when are we getting to the Sonic Spinball rewrite? Huh? 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 Oh, no. That's just just because you said that I got all the Eggman stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like that game. There's there's a question for you. What's what's your hot take? What's a Sonic game that is considered like bad that you actually really enjoy? Really enjoy is the question because like I I immediately know I have more fun playing Sonic 06 than a lot of people do. Um, but I will never say it's a good game. I'm just good. I just like that adventure style format is just like crack to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I think. I think Unleashed gets a bad rap. Okay. I mean, like, I, I think most people agree that Unleashed's day stages are fantastic, because, um, I mean, it, of course, created the boost format. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest problem with it is, of course, just the um, the night stages feel really awkward, and, like this very beat-em-up God of War-style uh, playthrough. Um, and it's just it's very unfortunate. And even then, you could have still had that. It's just weird that it's Sonic. That, to your point about, oh, they should have kept other characters playable, I've heard a lot of uh, fans argue that the night stages would have been fine if you just made them Knuckles stages mm -hmm. to give him unique gameplay. Either that or just have Knuckles' treasure hunt install. You don't need to even remake a whole... Um, just, like, make that more combat-focused. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I don't know, like, the the character shifting, the character focus uh, gameplay to, to create variety and unique um, opportunities yeah. in gameplay. Whoa. Okay, now we need a story justification for that. Yeah, so <laughs> this is a bit of a level gimmick, which I actually think is probably my favorite level gimmick in a casino stage, is where you have to get m earn enough money to get complete the level. <laughs> <laughs> you have to you have to keep going back there to shake out your rings and then climb to the top of the chaos emeralds which mm -hmm. i think is a really cool concept uh i don't know story-wise oh, nice. yeah this is a cute uh cute little reference this is another game series that probably should get some more love but sega mm -hmm. i think it gets plenty of love i i there is an almost insane fascination with knights um like i i have no idea because i Unless I'm mistaken, I think it only got the one game, and yet it is still, like, this beloved, uh, like, cult classic kind of game. Um, mm -hmm. I think it gets all the love it, it could possibly handle. <laughs> That's true. Um, I think maybe just on the developing side, at least, then. But mm -hmm. again, I, I don't envy Sega. That they're, they're having enough trouble with their star, never mind trying to do the side things. <laughs> right, right. Uh, no, it's, um... Yeah, the, that's a cool point. The the gameplay forcing you to make money to to beat the the level. I think that's a fun idea. Yeah, like if we were gonna make like each of these things actually more narratively based, what is it like? The the guy who owns the casino is like really corrupt and wants to keep the chaos emerald, so he makes this impossibly high demand that ah, oh, Sonic and Tails, you can't. You can't earn enough money to get this because there's no possible way. And then we just cut to like Sonic and Tails super speeding through every single thing at once <laughs> with like after images and like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fun idea. That's, that's a nice like gag kind of idea. I like that. This is one of my favorite things to do. Whoa, that was cool. Like yeah, that's that's, that's a cool like fucking that. thing. Lightspeed dash is one of those moves where like it's almost too fast, but it is really cool once you see it and and start getting it. You know, mm -hmm. it's one of those things about Sonic where I'm like, that's 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 one of the things modern Sonic introduced that I kind of wish Mania took as well because that be, it's, it's something it makes rings more gameplay focused than mm -hmm. they are normally. Well, like normally they are just health. 
But the moment yeah. you add the light speed dash, you can make them platforming. Yeah, that's is is Adventure the one that introduced the light yes. speed dash? It yeah, the I light thought speed so. dash and the homing attack, which are both great additions. Although the homing attack in 2D is a bad idea, I think, because then you just get too powerful. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's absolutely broken when you can get the homing attack in um in generations in the two D Sonic. They it it costs the same amount of um uh skill points for the homing attack as it does for supersonic. That and tells it's you everything you broken. need to know. <laughs> yeah, it is more broken than supersonic uh, as far as just how much it lets you just cheese those levels. Um, oh no, I got onto the lowest path possible. Better just uh, jump and press the homing attack, and here I am back on the fastest path. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, the the light speed dash is cool one. Um, I wonder if we can think of a way to make it like, like how does story. Learn that? Yeah, yeah. What's the what's the way that works? I mean, like rings never really like they're the currency. Obviously, but they they don't really have much of an in-universe explanation, so maybe you could bake it into that a little bit. Yeah, like, I think... Because this game is all about actually finally learning the lore behind the Chaos Emeralds, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe... Because they do have a requirement that you need 50 rings to turn onto Supersonic, so maybe they are linked to the Chaos Emeralds. Yeah, I can think of that. Some, something like that sounds doable, because... You know, I'm, the, the other video game franchise I'm a huge fan of is Jack and Daxter, and one of the things that always was really weird in that game to me was in the first game you get, um, what is it, uh, you get the, the, the precursor orbs, and that's the collectible that you have to use as currency throughout the entire game. Then you get to the second game, and it's like years in the future, and you have to collect precursor orbs like crazy. Um, or not really crazy, they're, they're so rare now, they're like these, you know, crazy things that you can you can only get by missions and they never do much with it but like the precursors are this crazy you know ancient entity and stuff and so it should it's really weird that their their artifacts go from currency to even more rare currency that unfortunately the game never lets you do much with mm -hmm. um so we could maybe work something something kind of like that like it is currency but it's also got some kind of deep mystical connection to the the weird forces at play in this universe um yeah. and that's why sonic's able to to do certain things um like that's why he's able to not get hurt when he has more rings on him that's why he's not that's why he's able to you know do stuff like the light speed dash to to unlock the power of uh of supersonic stuff like that do more story justification for it yeah i think that's a good thing i think like maybe we also, I don't I think this, the second one, we can tie into just Sonic getting older and getting stronger, is he just learnt how to do the homing attack. Mm -hmm. And then, because the point in this game as well is Knuckles and Tails don't have that. So you can make that Sonic after he beat Knuckles in Sonic 3, is like, me, he can glide. Why do I try and propel? I could do anything he can do. I propel myself forward through the air. So he like, he tries it. And then that's what gives him the homing attack. But... Because he, he's like, well, Knuckles have wigs. How does he glide? <laughs> <laughs> like, we did make it a story reason that even Sonic doesn't really get how Knuckles does what he does. Because in in universe, at least I think in the comics, it's the it's the energy of the Chaos Emeralds that lets Knuckles glide because it's one of his gifts of being their guardian. Mm. So maybe interesting. We can throw because at this point, this is a this is basically Sonic Four. So Sonic's already had the Chaos Emerald energy around for two games. If you want to make a story explanation that he's actually gotten gooder with it now, you can start to, like, his regular stats are getting beefed up. Yeah, I mean, like, the the idea of, like, how we see the homing attack used when it's used in, like, cinematics and stuff is he's shown to be jumping from opponent to opponent, and if you've got, like, this, you know, the crazy super speed uh, things, it's all being generated just by his legs... Um, it would make sense that he would be able to propel himself through jumps um, that that he'd be able to, like, you know, shoot across the air like that just by jumping from opponent to opponent, thing to thing. Um, I think that could, could make sense for just his natural ability uh, with his, his crazy, um, insane superpowers, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to do a sneaky level skip here. <laughs> oh, yeah, good you, Alfie. Uh, uh. Hey, there we go. Oh, look at that. Those are them speed strats. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, this is what you're only getting on Geeks for Fun. Someone who likes Sonic. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, wrong, never mind. Just <laughs> completely <laughs> fucked that up next. <laughs> never mind, just screwed it up. Never mind. Incredibly. Well, I forgot about right that. Now. That's interesting. Huh. That looks really hard to do. It'd be all slippery and cold. Yeah, I mean, he's wearing gloves at least. Yeah, yeah. What is it with cartoon characters in white gloves? Because people hate drawing hands. And if you draw gloves, I mean... you don't have to draw fingernails. There's, there's, the, there's the answer from an artist. <laughs> I guess, but like... <laughs> fingernails are really awkward to draw. Okay, fair, fair enough. <laughs> You know more than me. Uh, I know. I'm just saying my personal reason. If anyone actually agrees with that as the reason, then yay. But <laughs> Man, if I only had drawn Sonic with boxing gloves on the whole time. Oh my god. Well, that's what they did for Knuckles. <laughs> right? Oh, There we go. Until you get to boom. And then, let me get, yeah. Let me get arm boy. Yeah. I always find it funny. This is actually a cool thing that I'm glad they kept that I wish continued. That Tails follows you around in this game still, just like the classics. Mm -hmm. And if you, again, if you were like actually couched beside me to break the illusion a bit, uh, you could plug in a controller and you could play Tails. And then I could drag us both down. Exactly. Then we get the good content. <laughs> yeah, that'd be that good content. Um, oh. like one of those things with that idea, especially related to this game. Is like tells his whole arc is about kind of like dealing with the emotions of being the psychic. Mm. I always think that's really interesting, and but they don't, they never do a lot about how Sonic feels about that. And given this mm -hmm. is Sonic's story, I don't know. Do you think there's anything to Sonic trying to help Tails maybe get out of his shadow a little by like maybe being a little harsher to him, like in a in a like you're right, come on now kind of way, or do you think that's too much? Um. You know, I don't know. I'd have to think on that maybe a little bit more. Oh, God, this is cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to think on that. And I guess this is, not, not to uh, derail the point, this is a good example of Sonic's super speed doesn't make any sense <laughs> at times. And so it, ha it can't just be like a physical thing because I don't care how fast you are, you can't make a snowboard go faster. Well, you can by going extreme. Yeah, right. So, Whoa, like, bro. I don't know. He's got to have some kind of momentum lending powers that the Chaos Emeralds or the the weird forces of this universe are giving to him. There's yeah. just got to be. Because when he get collects a ring, ah, yeah. oh, that's so cool. Uh, he absorbs it, right? Like mm -hmm. it disappears into him, and it, I've always took that as it converts to energy. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be something weird like that. Um, oh, the fucking tricks. Um, yeah, so I don't know. As far as the Tails thing goes, I mean, I could definitely see it. It's it's one of those things that have to be um, dealt with in, in a way that's going to make it, you know, it's, it's delicate because you can't have Sonic just be a jerk. Um, maybe is... is I, it's been too long since I've seen a lot of Let's Plays of this or anything, and I, of course, never played it myself. Um, do you think... Is there a moment in Tails' story already where Sonic kind of leaves him up to something? Um, um, not on purpose, but there's a lot of times where they get separated. Okay. Um, I don't know, maybe, like, when we get to, like, the final boss kind of chaos stuff or maybe the Eggman confrontation... We can build it into stories some way or another that Sonic puts Tails in charge of doing this really important thing, and without Tails to do it, he, it will all fail. And Tails doesn't have the confidence to do it at first, but it's like, Sonic's trusting me to, so I've got to. And that kind of like gives him that confidence in himself. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's interesting because as well, that, that exact moment happens in Adventure 2. Okay. When, you know that scene where, like, Sonic gets, like, shot out the arc, and everyone thinks he's dead, um, but his last words are like, Tails, you've got this, right? And then mm -hmm. Tails is whole, has a whole thing where, like, Eggman's about, Eggman just completely disregards him, doesn't think he's a threat, but Tails kind of has it in a moment to himself where he's like, no, Sonic left this to me, I've got this, I've got it, and then you finally play, you beat Tails and you have to beat Eggman. Because um, you think you're the one, you think you're the main character right now. It's like a really good moment. So I wouldn't want to take that away. Because this whole arc is, Tails is still eight years old here. 
um, mm -hmm. depending on how much we want to change the age, you could be like 9 or 10. Because um, th these characters, for some reason, are, Sonic's still 16 in generations for some reason. <laughs> 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 so it doesn't, I think we do want to keep the aging um, a thing. So maybe we can mm -hmm. make Tails a little older here. But his whole arc, I think, is more learning to value himself and know he can do things outside of Shadow Sonic's shadow. But it's not quite, I need to be the one to step up to be the main play. It's being able to do even just side things without Sonic. Like, it's he's at a really dependent stage right now. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we could we could definitely play around with that. And um, I was holding and... off a little bit to finish that point because now we got Big Boy. <laughs> Yay! I think after this would be a good time to, to close out this episode then. Sounds good. Uh, give me the emeralds. Wait, why, why is Knuckles always after him? It's because like, this dude, is come the on. second time where he's been tricked. <laughs> 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 now you're ready for the... This is one thing I wish I could change gameplay-wise. This fucking boss fight is ridiculously easy. Look, just... Oh no, Tails should... Look, no, you're done. Aww, oh, that's disappointing. It sucks, he should be so much stronger. Yeah, it really should be a much harder boss fight. But yeah, this whole thing, really good moment. Uh, Eggman planted Knuckles against Sonic, and Sonic against himself, so he could get the emeralds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh man, the voice acting. <laughs> the modeling. The, oh god, Sonic's face is just all <laughs> over the place. It's so bad. I understand that blend shape wasn't even probably invented yet, but just, man, they couldn't have made it look worse. <laughs> uh huh. Well, it was very experimental. Chaos um, is gonna get his thing. There's gonna be a boss fight, but I think this is a good cliffhanger. Uh, if you okay. enjoyed this episode, Sonic Adventure, be sure to check us out in the next time, because we'll continue to do this whole game. Yay! <laughs> Boss fight cliffhanger. Dun dun dun! See you then.